my fly shoes on Stepping out my best self-esteem No, I'm not a size three, but I'm still happy Don't listen to what haters say Just let my inner beauty shine all up in their face Girls, it's time to take a stand Don't realize it, but we got the power in our hands So all my girls around the world Raise your hands if you're a glamour girl Brandy J Lux Curse TV season two. I am so excited to be back and we're gonna have an amazing season this year, but it's not about me. Well, sometimes it is about me, but not today. I am so excited to be sitting next to Monica Montgomery, who is running for city council of district four in San Diego. And it means so much to me because that is my area. That's my district. My mom and dad moved into the area, bought a house in 98, and we've been there ever since. Majority of all of the grandkids have been in the area went to schools in the area so we are so embedded in our community and with the race going on and with the changes in the community that some people are, are happy with and some people are not happy with i thought it was time for us to not just sit back and watch but to talk to the to the leaders in our community who can make that change which is monica montgomery how are you uh, wonderful thank you for having me no thank you i was so excited when you replied back i called my mom screaming i was like she's like yes <laughs> things that make me happy <laughs> but I just want to say thank you so much for doing what you're doing for the community and for the black community as well this is what we really need we need change in district 4 and in the world of politicians we really do so my first question is what made you decide to say enough is enough you wanted to run well, for me, it goes back quite a ways. Mm -hmm. um, I actually ran in 2013. Oh, okay. Um, and so after that, I worked at City Hall for three years. Wow, okay. And I actually worked in the mayor's office for two different mayors and then for the city council member that I'm running against. Oh, okay. Yes. And so I left the day that she said that black people deserve to be profiled because we commit all the crimes. Oh. Um, and so that is what prompted this run. Mm. And originally when I left, it wasn't on my mind to run again. Yeah. Um, it is very hard to go against an incumbent. And there are just a lot of political equations that you know you have to think about when you're running. But you know, you talk about the change, you talk about you know, our community and how it used to be, how it is now. And I really believe that we need leadership that is strong. Yes. Leadership of character and integrity. And so I decided to, to run. And I'm so happy you did because, like I said, being in the community, um, it's been 21 years now from where it was then to where it is now, predominantly black community. And I'm all for improving communities. Mm -hmm. I'm all for bringing in new business, mm -hmm. but I'm all for keeping it small business, mm -hmm. small black businesses that have thrived in that community for so long and to mm -hmm. see them gone mm -hmm. and the big business come in, you're just like, okay, the gentrification is happening. Yeah. And you've been going door to door. What is the feel in the community from the people who've been there for so long from then to now? Well, uh, there are quite a few changes that have happened in yes. 20 years. One is our, the demographics of the community have changed. So now we have about 41% Latino. And the, the you know population of black people is, is decreasing. Mm -hmm. um, there are pro a lot of reasons for that, but be that as it may, that's where we are now. Exactly. And so as uh, people of color, we do have to rise together because you know we oftentimes are treated similarly mm -hmm. um but we can look at the statistics and see that black people are on the bottom with a lot of the statistics that we have health wise mm -hmm. business wise and the like so you know we we need to um really look at those and see how we can improve our state um the state of being here in the city mm -hmm. um I see gentrification as well. Um, it could go one of two ways. Um, we could end up with very high density, a lot of traffic without resources that could end up being decreasing the value and the quality of life of our community. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a case where people of color are being moved out 
Yes. Um, and not allowed to occupy these buildings that are being built. So I believe in a balanced approach. I use this uh, example all the time. Mm -hmm. There is a business co-op in Paradise Hills, mm -hmm. which is where I grew up, a part of District 4. Five families came together and opened their own coffee shop, put their own assets into wow. building. They hire from the community. And it's, a, it's like a beacon of light. It's a small start, but it's very encouraging to see that type of collaboration within the community. Because that's one thing that's lacking. And that's one thing that I, I do complain about and I tell people and I said, you know, you don't see that. When you go up to L.A., you see it. And I was like, explaining to someone, I said, you can go up to, I go up to LA all the time. Mm -hmm. And in Inglewood, there's a strip. Mm -hmm. And you can see they have improved the strip, but it's still all black businesses. Mm -hmm. And they come together. And my whole thing is, why is that such a problem in San Diego? Yeah. Why is it such a huge problem for the black community to come together and to pool our resources together? Yeah. Why do you feel that is? Some of it is a numbers game. Okay. Um, we our population in the county is about five to six percent okay so we you know there aren't as many black people here uh, as there are in LA mm -hmm. and so it leaves us less room to disagree on things okay right which which you know we are people yes and I, I don't uh, I don't believe that we even have to agree on every single thing we right? don't yeah you know I, I think that's actually you know, oppressive when people tell tell us we do have to agree on everything because we all should have the freedom to have our own mind. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, we need to find a way to work together. Yes. You know, and I believe in being very transparent, putting things on the table, finding the top five things that we want mm -hmm. and kind of leaving the rest to, you know, be figured out later. But we are dying in the city of San Diego and I think that I meet awesome people every day. Yeah. You know, I meet awesome black people every single day. And there are ways that we can come together. Uh, I think it does have to do with some leadership, that that is a priority. Yes. I think that it has, you know, we, we should um, talk to our allies about that. Once we, Ways that we can um, integrate our allies into what we're doing. Um, but black people, we need to make ourselves a priority. And I, and you know everyone else does it we can do it too and i'm just if i could jump up <laughs> <laughs> because that is everything everything you're saying is so true mm -hmm. and everything and that's how i've always felt and i've even told people i said you know i left the district i did i you know at the time i was married we moved to chula vista mm -hmm. east lake was the new family place yeah. to be yeah. and and you you tend to say when you get leave the district you're like okay i'm just gonna stay where I'm at and things like that. But then keep coming back with my family being here, my in our family home. It's I felt like, okay, I just cannot not do anything anymore. Yeah. And I just feel like as we are stronger in numbers as a black community, we are so strong when we come together mm -hmm. and we put the egos aside. And you see it in other races. And you you know it, it's it's really amazing like when i go to eat to new york you see the jewish communities are just huge mm -hmm. they own grocery stores dry cleaning mm -hmm. banks mm -hmm. and that's how that the culture keeps going and it's like why don't we have that yeah. why is it so hard for us to have that um and i wanted us to get to that but we're going to take a quick break and then we're really, really going to discuss like what can we do versus talking about it what actions mm -hmm. need to take place for the black community, not only in San Diego, because if we can do amazing things here, it can inspire other communities in the United States. So we'll be right back. Brandy J. Looks Curse TV with Monica Montgomery. I am so excited. I screamed when she said yes to the interview. So I'm trying to maintain my excitement right now, but we'll be right back. Well, we are back here at Lux Curves TV sitting now with Monica Montgomery, who's running for council, the city council position for District 4 here in San Diego. And we have been talking about so many things going on in the district that needs to happen, especially with it being the, a predominantly the black community, which I feel like I think it's the only one in San Diego County. I could be mistaken. But as I mentioned to you off camera, being in the community and seeing, you know, we're great at you know, protesting and marching, but there's more that needs to be done. So what else can we do to take back 
our community? Well, I think one thing we do have to realize is that it's no longer predominantly black. Mm -hmm. uh, District 4 used to be, it's no longer. Um, and that has we have to take that into consideration. Yes. Now, I have said publicly that I believe that I can be unapologetically black woman mm -hmm. and represent all people of color. Yes. You know, I think that's very important. I don't think I have to compromise who I am to represent all. Um, I do have to represent all. Yes. So that's, you know, um, one thing that, that we have to focus on. But as we l learn about each other more, you know, as we talk to each other more, we, we begin to appreciate who we are as mm -hmm. people, you know. Um, we are mothers and daughters and and fathers and brothers and veterans and yes. seniors and youth. And so there needs to be um, an appreciation for who District 4 is, going from that to an appreciation of what the history of District, District 4, 4 is, mm -hmm. which it has been a strong black population with strong black leaders, bold leaders, mm -hmm. that often served as the moral compass for this city. Mm -hmm. You know, And so that history, we don't have to lose that legacy and that history in order to move forward, even though we are not... Uh, it is not predominantly black anymore. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that that building on those things is important as we talk about economic opportunity. Um, we talk about keeping our community safe. Yes. We talk about police reform. We can kind of go into that if you want. But um, I think that we can build on the history and the legacy of our community. Because it's a beautiful community. Mm -hmm. And it's something that... I'm proud of and I want the next generation to be proud of but it's also a community that has been over you know at one point overtaken with gang violence yes. and some to even to this day I mean I still hear stories and it's more like okay when you hear those stories what do you feel like you could do different so that's um, near and dear to my heart when I talk about my platform because I have made police reform as a part of my platform. I believe that the policing, that we are over police in communities of color. Now, yes. it is a residual effect from um, some of our history with gang violence. Mm -hmm. I also believe that if you do not invest into communities, economically and otherwise, you are intentionally creating a place exactly. where there is violence, um, where people have to make decisions that, that in their rationale include violent behavior. To survive. To survive, right. And so we have been, in my opinion, uh, victims of that. Now, um, we, I still believe in America. Mm -hmm. You know, this is still my country. Uh, I still believe there is an opportunity here, but we do need to talk about our institutionalized racism in our systems. Exactly. That really uh, are shown in communities like ours. So that's why I chose police uh, reform as a platform um, item, because we now have studies that show what we've been saying all along, mm -hmm. is that, you know, Police are pulling me over just because I'm black, or police are pulling up me over just because I'm Latino, or whatever it is. There are studies now that show that, and what we can do to strengthen the relationship between community and police, we can implement some of those recommendations that have come from some studies. Oh yeah. Um, and and so that is really the crux of uh, what I talk about when I talk about police reform. Mm -hmm. I think we have to have, again, a historic perspective yes. about um, our intentional racist systems yes. that have kept some of us down. You know, and, and without addressing that, I, I just, you know, there's no way that we can accurately help to fix the problem. We, I still, like you said, I still hear stories, things still happen. They really do, and we need to be um, diligent about that. I also know of so many um, good people that are helping those in need. I also know a lot of crime that happens in other areas that is never even mentioned. <laughs> or Nothing. Never even mentioned. But if something happens in this district, 
cameras, it, everything, everywhere. everywhere. And it, it is really, it is baffling me because it does start with, you know, the police reform, but what we've been seeing over the, these years, you know, innocent lives being taken just because of the color of their skin. That's right. Me telling my um, daughter, you don't wear that hoodie. Yeah. Me telling my, you know, explaining to my son who is, he is mixed, he's half black and half white, but telling mm -hmm. him, they're just going to look at you as a black man. Yeah. So I have to prepare you and raise you different. And as a mother, it, it's, it's disheartening because he's like, he said, why mommy? Why? Why? And I have to explain to him because it's the color of your skin. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and it has to be when I'm in the car with my children and we're in the area, I see a police, I'm turning, I'm making sure, okay, just, why do I have to be in fear? That's right. That's right. When I see a police officer driving behind me. One thing I say is that, you know, when I go and knock on doors and talk to people every day, we all have respect for the police. Yes, we do. We all do. Um, but we want to ensure that everyone is being protected and served in the same way. And, and they're and them having happening. respect for us. Exactly. And not just thinking because of what the color of the skin we're doing something. Exactly. It was one time I was driving, um, it was I was in Pacific Beach mm -hmm. driving and a cop pulled me over. He's like, What are you doing in this area? Yep. My friend has a story. Um, someone pulled her, a cop pulled her over and said, Is this your car? <laughs> like um yeah. I can't go to the beach. Yeah, I don't. I can't drive a nice car. I right. can't. Why? And I tell people all the time, like people of color, we are so enriched with so much. We are so talented. We are so gifted. We are so mm -hmm. smart. Mm -hmm. You know, we are the ones who are going to college, getting our degrees. Mm -hmm. But we need to do more. So that is shown in the world and in our country, where you know you see who's in office. <laughs> And and it, it's like a ripple mm. effect, and I do see people losing hope. Yeah, I I understand that, and that was a main reason for running, is to give us hope again. To, to and and it's I'm 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 an, a vessel of that. I'm, you know, not perfect, um, but I believe that you, when you made the decision to make your own media outlet, I believe that's a calling. Mm -hmm. Right. I think yes. that is something that was put on your heart to do yes. for the world. Yes. And I feel the same way about this candidacy. Well, I'm so excited. I just, anything you need from me, from us, you have it. And when I was even talking to my mom and she was like, I said, mom, this is like, this is our, our community. Yeah. You see the change. Yeah. We have to do something. But let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. We're going to talk a little bit more about um, what's going next in your campaign. And everyone needs to get out there and vote. And then... If you have any questions, we'll let you know where you can contact uh, Ms. Montgomery, but we'll be right back. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today on these important issues. But before we leave here today, I do want to ask a couple more questions about, um, we were talking off camera about uh, black women coming together. Yes. And there is a rise of black business women. Yes. And I and I'm and I know a lot of great black business women in San Diego who would love to support you and to have you, you know, to be a part of everything we have going on. How do you feel about seeing that growth of black women of color? This not just black women just saying, yeah. I wanna do this and I wanna be in business. Yes. And what does that do for our community? Oh, you know, when the black woman rises, everyone does. Mm-hmm. So the more we can come together um, in all in all of our uh, variety, yes, you know, the more beautiful it is. And so we, you know, we can use the power of a city council office to bring women together in mm -hmm. the same space, you know, and really as a way to promote our community, to promote our businesses but also each other, to lift each other up. There are a lot of efforts going on right now to do that. There is. There are, and I'm very proud of every single one of them. But if we could have one day where we all come together in San Diego, mm -hmm. that would be historic. I think she's just putting a pressure on me to do something. <laughs> I feel it. Like, I, when she said that, I was like, 
and she the way she yes. just looked at me i was like all right god if this is what she's gonna have her tell me to do to say come out and do it <laughs> oh gosh because you know you tell brandy to do something i'm gonna figure out how to get it done that's always been my mo but it's so true. It is. And, and and for so long for me, and I and I said this when I did my State of the Black Women even I said I didn't feel welcome amongst black mm-hmm. women in San Diego mm-hmm. because I wasn't raised in District 4. Mm-hmm. I was raised in Chula Vista, mm-hmm. and then we moved here. So I was called the bougie white girl. Mm-hmm. And, I was, and, and we talked about that, and I said, you know, don't down me. I didn't have a choice where I grew up mm-hmm. at, mm-hmm. but accept me. Mm-hmm. I I can, you know, I have, I've lived here for 30 years. I went to high school in Bonita. Okay. You know, so I can kind of, I understand that. Mm-hmm. I think that, um, I you know, I hope that you feel a calling to do that. I also think that there needs to be um, conversation, yes. relationship building. Yes. You know, um, behind the scenes too. That's that's extremely important. And no matter where I am, I will dedicate uh, and commit to helping to fulfill that in whatever capacity. Thank you I so am. much. I mean, because for one thing, I want to do is um, get more into the community. Mm-hmm. I've always been. I'm very outspoken. Mm-hmm. Everyone who knows me knows Brandy. I just say it and just comes to mind and sometimes I should have a filter but I don't <laughs> and I and that's why it's been on my heart to really just get more out in the community and be that and have that platform so I will be reaching out to you more often to see what I can do even now with your campaign to help more um, because it, it's it takes it's gonna it has to go beyond this interview mm-hmm. I agree. and I can't just go we did the interview but there's nothing coming. There's no backup. Yeah. And I'm all about backup. Yes. And um, with all the amazing women of color doing businesses now, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing to see. It is. And it's really inspiring. And it's great for our youth. Yes. I agree. How does your campaign touch our youth? So for me, yes. we have a, a Youth for D4 initiative. Okay. Where we are bringing young folks in and um, kind of taking them through the process of politics so and then getting them engaged and involved in campaign work if they so choose. Okay. Also doing a college woke tour with mm. two other candidates. We were at San Diego State um, last week, I believe. It might have been this week. I don't know. <laughs> um, we've also, uh, we're going to be at California Western on May 1st, which is this upcoming Tuesday, okay. I believe. Um, getting the young people involved and, you know, even just explaining what a city council member does. Exactly. You know, because I, 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 I will never forget talking to one young person and going through my platform. They were like, but how are you going to do that? Like, you know, I don't understand. And then when I started talking about how the city council actually votes and creates policy mm-hmm. or laws that we have to follow, then it clicked. It clicked to them. That's, that's where like, it starts. Oh my goodness, are you serious? We we choose a representative to do that? Yes, mm-hmm. we do. And so that has been very enlightening for me because I, you know, am entrenched in the system. Yes, of course, I've worked in the systems. You know, I kind of understand it. And sometimes when you understand, you speak to everyone as if they understand. Um, and that, you know, we shouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I am going to meet folks where we're at. Good. You know, and I think that's very, very important, especially for politics. It is. It's meeting the folks where they're at so they can feel like you have a connection with them yeah. and you understand them. Yes. And I feel like that's what's more needed now more than ever. Yes. And the youth, they're so powerful. Oh my goodness. They are extremely powerful. They are. And they have so much at their, I was, it's this commercial that the actor and rapper Common, he says you have so much at your fingertips than uh, than past generations. That's right. You have the power. And when that commercial comes on, I get chills because it's like, we all have that much and we all need to utilize it. And I thank you for running. I thank you for seeing that there needs to be change um, for our district, for our community, for the city of San Diego. And I thank you so much for taking the time 
to respond and to sit down with me today as other people did not. Because I guess, you know, you got to go to a gala. But anyways. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I just, I have no filter. Really don't care. I say what I feel because I pay my taxes. This That's community right. means important to me. That's right. And my family's invested in this community. Yes. So pay attention to the people who, you know, who are doing great things in our community who want to get to know our people in office more. That's right. It's all about that. So everyone needs to come out and vote in June. June 5th is the election. We were talking about this. We have to translate this woke mentality yes. to the polls. Yes. So June 5th is, um, I think, a Tuesday, June 5th, 2018. Mail-in ballots should be coming out soon. For those of you that, you know, mail your ballot in or take it to the registrar of voters, you can do that. If you are not registered to vote, you can register to vote now mm. up to 15 days before the actual election. Or if you just move back in the district. Yes, you need to re-register. and get your address updated. That's right. I did mine. <laughs> Yay. Yes, so get out there. And the night of the election, I would love to be there yeah. and come out. And I want to do more before then. We still have time. And people, you have to get out, vote. Closed mouth does not get fed. That's right. And we can no longer just talk about it. We have to show action. Monica Montgomery is the right candidate for District 4. She is fully endorsed by Lux Curves Magazine, Brandon D Productions, the Joyner family. I just put it all out there because that's just how I am. I represent my family I'll very well. I'll put you well. on my list. Yes. <laughs> Please put us on our list. Anything you need will be there. And um, thank you so much again for taking the time to thank meet you. with us. We will make sure we have all your information on for after the interview where people can find you and I'm just so honored that you actually took the time to talk with me today. Well, I'm honored that you reached out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, thank you so much for tuning in Lux Curse TV Season 2, streaming on New You Network on Roku, Apple TV. Stay tuned. We have so much coming on this season. Make sure you follow us. Lux Curves is always Curves with a K and Brandy Curvy J. Curves with a K. I mean, that's just my staple. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.